chillaxing. Isn't that right, guy? Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books, and this is part two of my Springathon vlog. So, check in my videos for number one if you're interested. Anyway, I just finished The Story of More by Hope Jaron, best selling author of Lab Girl, and I highly, highly recommend this book. This is how we got to climate change and where to go from here. And I know there have been a lot of books on the market in the last few years. I've been hesitant to read them um, because I know and understand a lot of the topic and it is depressing, um, but so very important. Uh, and it's hot in here because I'm not turning on the AC right now because it's only May. Anyway, um, this one, I just think she hits the mark perfectly. Um, none of this information is stuff that I don't already know more or less. Um, but the way she presents it, it's so personal and so relatable and it's not overwhelming yeah it's she leaves you with hope and i just really really appreciate that in this particular style of narrative and i think this is just a book i want everybody to read i want to give it to people so for example the the part i just read today um she has such a beautiful way of transitioning between topics as well. So every person I've asked has offered me a unique definition of our most universal concept, the circle of life. A friend from childhood told me how her first granddaughter was born on the same day that her own grandmother died and that the equal weight of joy and sadness combined to convince her that life cannot be lost or gained only lived and loved oh, just like, oh. and the parts about her dad oh my word oh my goodness um he was her first science teacher and i just i'm there for it anyway you know she relates it back to things that we can totally capture in our own consciousness like you know, this idea of the Olympic Games from my childhood on and on every four years, the Winter Olympics. Uh, we're approaching a point in time where those won't be able to be held outside anymore. Like, that's just kind of mind blowing. And, you know, a lot of states um, here in the US and, you know, cold climates around the world that have um, tourist industries based on their snowfall are having to build indoor facilities and like that makes it so much worse the energy expense to create a cold climate indoors I mean anyway and then the other thing she does really good is kind of draw this line between the haves and the have-nots and how we the haves in um, our extremely industrialized, modernized societies have so much and leave so little for the have-nots. Um, so here in this section about um, rising waters, she says, she makes it so individualized and personal. Uh, the River Delta nation of Bangladesh lies just barely above sea level. Within its borders, a population half the size of the United States ekes out a living from a piece of land the size of Alabama. If the sea continues to rise, the area of Bangladesh is likely to shrink by 20% over the next 30 years, crowding people into even less land and fewer resources. Incidentally, the people of Bangladesh produced far less than 1% of the carbon dioxide emitted to the atmosphere during the last 50 years. Yet, 
they are poised to pay the highest price incurred by its effects. This is a common trend. The people benefiting from the use of fossil fuels are not the people who suffer the most from its excess. Highly recommend. This is so good. Such a good read. 2020 Book 2 Prize coming for you. 2021, I mean. This just came out in 2020. Hot off the press. See it here first or second or third. I don't know, but I love this book. Okay, and then I have been reading. I started this one um, May 1st, and I've been reading it just a couple little sections a day. So this is The Great Naturalists, um, and it's edited by Robert Huxley. I don't know who the authors are. I'm sure it's in the index. Um, but this is essentially a textbook, uh, uh, almost coffee table style. So there's a lot of really neat um, pictures in it. So I've really been enjoying it. But like I said, it's, it is textbook style, like high school, college textbook. So it's not like thrilling reading, but it's, it's interesting in its own way. I think the most interesting thing about this book is, you know, it starts with the ancient Greeks and goes all the way up to, I think, um, Darwin, something like that. Um, but it's, it's kind of illustrating the idea that, you know, Darwin wasn't, you know, didn't come by his knowledge in a vacuum that knowledge builds on itself. So, he, you know, is standing on the shoulders of all those people who came behind him, like Humboldt that I just read last month and even his own um, grandfather. So yeah, all the way through to Darwin right there. Anyway, I am going to, so pretty. I'm gonna go uh, read a couple sections in this uh, and show you a couple more pages maybe and then pick out my next read. So the Hope Jaren was for the plant prompt and I finished my bird prompt in the last, um, good golly, I've been talking for seven minutes. Um, I finished that one in the last vlog. So I have to do uh, water and animal. So let's get to it. See if we got any pretty pictures to show you. Cherokees. Oh, that's a cool one. <laughs> I like that one too. I like botany, art. I like that one too. I want more. Botany, art. Okay, let's get started. Don't let me get in your way, boo. Silly girl. Okay, I'm on track. Six hours, six hours, three hours so far today. And my page counts are hovering around the 200 page mark. I forgot to put the prompts the other day, so I wrote those in just now. And I have finished plant and bird. So now on to, oh my God, I wrote animal and animal. Shameful. Ugh. Let me fix that. Okay, and water. <laughs> so, uh, what am I gonna read? Oh, I might read that for animal. Oh, this could be fun for animal too. Hmm, what else? Oh no, I, I might read. Yeah, I wanna read this for animal because I'm into the natural history thing after reading The Feather Thief, and I also want to read um, this one for the water prompt, because
because Britta and I are walking the uh, Key West Trail on Walking for Fun, the online app. So, oh, it's not as bad as it looks. Must be thick pages, eh? Anyway, let's get started. Babies get all cozy? Too cozy and pesses? Good morning. So yesterday I was a wee bit lazy and didn't do much of anything besides um, reading, which is good. <laughs> I didn't get any of my springathon um, outings done yesterday. So this morning I'm going down to the neighbor's pasture to get some wildflower photos and I'll see you there. there is. You might not think it looks like much, but let's get a little closer to the action. I mean, look at how pink this flea vein is. Wow. This is um, that really bright orangey red milkweed. It's a little early for it to bloom yet, but stay tuned. I always look things up and then can't remember later. Do you see the dew on those? And then this one. Focus. That's going to make a neat photo later with the that dried grass in the background. And then uh, this one. Oh, yeah. Oops. See? awesome. Can you hear the roosters? I post my flower pictures on Instagram, so if you want to see those, I am Doris Sander there. I'll try to link it below. There's a little friend. Ooh, what is that? Ha <laughs> ha, that was funny. Ladybug. What would a hayfield be without a patch of clover? Am I right? We need smell-o-vision for these. Ooh. That bee's got a load. Whole fence line full of blackberries. Who are you? A robin? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it's a baby. It's a noisy one. Guys, these turn into huge dandelion puffball looking things when they mature. There's a little friend. Do you see him? Ladybug baby. Kids cool. The babies are bigger than the parents. I bet there's something cool in there somewhere. Bye bye, Hayfield. See you next time. Just one more ladybug. What, boo? What you want? You want me to get up? Tell me. Oh my goodness. What time is it even? Do you know? Am I oversleeping? I don't think so. I think it's supposed to rain all day. <laughs> so, I thought I would come out while it's not raining yet uh, and fill a bucket because I didn't do very well with the weeding challenge this week. This part's done. 
but yeah. <laughs> the flowers are looking pretty though. Bunnies are out this morning too. So pretty. You're such a pretty girl. I don't know if you're a girl, maybe you're a boy. <laughs> bunny bunny. Bunny bunny. Hey, so I'm trying to get a little early morning walk in because um, weather.com says it's gonna rain all day, maybe. So we'll see, <laughs> but uh, it's not raining now. So here we are. I do have a Zoom appointment at 10, so I, I only have about 30 minutes before I need to go in and look presentable. Um, and yeah, the, the museum book, I have 70 pages left, so hopefully we'll get that tackled this morning and in this vlog and then make a determination about extending Springathon. I think it's a good idea, right? Yeah. Ooh! Finally! It's raining. Ooh, baby. Thinking about it again. I finished Dinosaurs in the Attic, the American Museum of Natural History by Douglas J. Preston. I really enjoyed this, um, especially the dinosaur sections, all the fossil sections, and the um, different types of animal rooms in, in the museum. Like the first half is about the expeditions and the second half is about the museum storage itself. Um, it's real interesting to read about how um, these preservations are used for science today, not just to golf at. So anyway, um, I also finished my 24 hours finally, just a couple hours late. I had meant to do it in four days, and it took four days and a couple hours. But anyway, yeah, yay. I think I am going to extend my little spring-a-thon for a couple more days, so I'll make one more vlog. So I can finish up my um, swamp book and another fiction that I meant to read. And also I have a couple more um, nature visits that I want to do. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll be back soon. Bye.